Thanks for letting me come do this. Um, how many of you play golf? Oh, good. You're a little bit familiar with what we're talking about then. Um, background. Uh, 50 years ago, I started working in a nursery in a greenhouse as a kid in high school. And I've never grown up. I continue to work in nurseries and greenhouses, and most of my focus is in golf. I came from central Illinois up to northern Illinois in 1992 to start consulting in a nursery and a greenhouse. 1990, late 92, I even met, had met David and had worked with uh, some other folks around the country in biological work and, and our alternate chemistries, if you will, for greenhouse and nursery work. Decided to take a six acre greenhouse and 300 acres of nursery crops into organic and biological. Started doing that in 1993. We did that for three years in there. One of the really neat, neat things about that was I used to spray chemicals constantly. I grew up spraying chemicals on greenhouse crops. Within about three months after going biological and <coughs> no chemical in these greenhouses and nurseries, I got sick for three months and went through a whole body transformation by eliminating the chemicals just out of my life of doing that. It was the most amazing thing in the world. I'll, I'll never forget the transformation. But we started growing nursery crops and greenhouse crops, biological and, and alternate chemistries and stuff. Did that for about four years. A company then hired me to build a, lo a line of potting soils for them. We did that and sold that across the upper Midwest for six years. All of the composting we did all of the preparations the raw materials that went into the potting soils were all done biologically. We used rock mineral powders, things like that. All the basic uh, chemistries were done um, through uh, reams, all brick, those type of methods. In all of the composting, in all the nursery, and all the greenhouse soils. We ended up selling those across, I can't tell you, seven states or something like that, raising 12 million one-gallon perennials a year. Most of the perennials that went into Walmart Home Depot and Lowe's were all coming out of our programs. And that still exists some of that today. Then I grew up a little bit more and I became just totally, I, I don't sell anything by the way. I'm 100% information consultant. So I started a company called BioGrow Technologies in 1992, doing consulting and biological work. Somebody walked up to me in 2003 and said, what do you sell biologically? So my name had to change. I became dirt and turf consulting. And that's what we do. We work in dirt, we work in turf. Okay, maybe what? Oh, no. Okay, sorry. So that's my company, and that's kind of my background. Today, we work almost exclusively in turf. I run about 85 golf courses in four states on the road 200 days a year. We also work in what's called engineered soils. We build rooftop soils. I say we build them. We do the quality control and building of engineered soils all the way across the country, coast to coast. We do most of our work in Texas and California, quite a bit of work in Indianapolis and Minnesota, where we design what's called in engineered soils. So when you have a really lousy clay soil, okay, how would you like to plant trees in that and expect them to live and guarantee them? We have to design methods to, to get that done, and we do as much of it, we, it organically as we can. So that's the basics of our company. You've already seen this today. You guys have been all <coughs> over this, and I'm so proud of you for doing it, because uh, you go to the same conference as I do, apparently. So yeah, you've all seen this already, right? And I do a lot of teaching, a, a, a lot of uh, speaking at conferences and stuff where people aren't as familiar as you folks, so I apologize. But, we agree with all these type of philosophies. But the other, and you've seen this today too, right? We're all familiar? Okay? We know this, we know this in, in farm soils, right? We know this in dirt. This exists not only there, it exists in horticulture as well. I'll show you why, where we think about it. So what's the connection between all of it? In our opinion, okay? Besides the chemical, physical, and biological, you have to have light, water, and air. Agree? Okay? So our opinion is that the texture of the, of the soils dictates water movement. Tell me where I'm wrong. The amount of water movement dictates what? The amount of air in the soil, right? 
If we have good water and air movement and good conditions, we have biology, right, Barry? Okay. I'm not, you gotta tell me. If we have good biology going on, we're gonna have good chemical movement release and activity, am I right? And that's gonna affect the physical, so where's it in? Take one of these out, what happens? Yeah, dominoes quit falling, don't they? Okay, so light's light, right? We deal with a lot of shade issues on golf courses and so forth. So in some, one of my classes, I put it together this way. I thought it was kind of nice as well. So all something we're very familiar with. You guys deal with this every day. You're used to this soil profile, right? Okay, very nice. How would you like to deal with this? Let me explain what this is. This is a golf green. Anybody know how a golf green gets built? No. No? Pardon me? Like a highway. Like a highway. <laughs> they want it to be just as hard and just as fast, trust me. Okay, so my hands are shaped. I, I'll, I'll get this to work. So this is our, our grass on the, on the top. It's maintained at less than a tenth of an inch. Less than a tenth in most golf courses. This is sand. 12 inches deep. It would be like 85% uh, sand and 15% peat moss or built in some, that's a typical fashion. This down here would be a gravel layer, pea gravel, into a tile. If the sand is such that it falls into the gravel, okay, it'll stop the water from moving. You put one coffee filter in a coffee pot, you make coffee, one runs one's fine, correct? What happens if you put six filters in it? Bubbles over the top. So if the sand infiltrates the gravel, that's what happens. So this is a, called a choker layer, which is an intermediate layer that stops that from happening. Okay? Point being that this is called a perched water table green. When the water runs down through the sand, it'll hold on to enough water that it sits above the gravel layer. That, that water is then wicked back up to the surface as the plant uses the water, creates what's called negative pressure, and the, the water then will wick itself back up to the top. Okay? That's how the green functions. This is what green looks like. Okay? This right here is the 12 inches of original mix. This here is where we've been growing grass for 26 years on that golf course. Those greens have failed. We are now in our second year of a three year renovation on this golf course. It's got 27 holes. We did nine last year, nine this year, nine this following year. Okay? This is how we find out, without tearing up a golf green, <laughs> digging a hole in the middle of it, what it looks like and where the problems lie. We try to have a tube through it and we measure. Again, there's your 12 inches. This is how much growth has been on that golf course over time. Now, I should tell you, so the grass started here, and as it grows, we add sand to it every week to two weeks to three weeks. We're top dressing it with sand. The point is to dilute the organic matter that it creates as well as keep a nice firm surface for playing conditions. Okay, so that's why that grows up in, in 25 years like that. So, this is a core out of a sand-based green. Well, it's all sand all the way through that. Okay. This is a sand-based green, 85-15 mix, and it was um, sodded with si uh, sod that was grown on sand. It left a uh, stratified layer right here and then this is where we grew it in after those next few years okay not all greens or not all golf courses are made new out of sand some of them are just simply soil that's piled up and then we add sand to it on the surface and, and grow some grass different environment entirely right these channels are where we run tines into the ground and aerify that and add sand to it so that the water moves down through those columns better, dries out the green so we can play golf. Okay? This is called the California construction because this has got a bunch of very coarse, ugly sand below over top of a drainage system. Very fine, nice sand that they build the golf green out of. Okay? This right here is where we started growing the grass at. So, when we started growing grass right here, water would move through the fine sand but would not go into the coarse sand because the fine sand has more surface area and has more water, right? So that turns anaerobic. Okay? 
water bridges, it goes anaerobic, digestion slows, now the green stays too wet. So now they start to aerify it on a regular basis to try and dry it out and add new sand. There's one, two, and three different aerification levels. Okay? How much water do you suppose drops down that column? None. See where that grew, that thatch grew over the top? It's like your thumb over a straw. Won't let the water go down. So we have to solve that problem. It's one of the things we do. This is a golf green that had that fine sand over the coarse sand. And what happens is the fine sand holds a lot of water and it turns anaerobic and it forms a disease called black layer. That's, that's this layer you see in here. Roots quit growing below that anaerobic layer, just like your cornfield, right? And all of a sudden that sod, that golf course rolled up. It literally rolled up the turf because there was no root underneath it. When they went out to mow and cultivate one day, put air, air, do some verification, it rolled up on the machine. It's destroyed the entire green. Okay. This is the profile that we're trying, this is where we're, what we're trying to beat on golf with, with these products. The black lines are organic growth through the season. The sand lines are the sand top dressing that is done to provide playing conditions throughout the season. Okay? A golf course like this has probably got three or four sand conditions a year. In other words, say one inch of this is probably about a year. Okay? So they stratify this. When water moves down through this profile, every time there's a physical change of organic matter or the physical size of the sand, it'll stratify it. Meaning the water's going to come down and it's going to go lateral until it builds enough water table to fall to the next level and then it does it again. Every one of those become anaerobic zones. Okay? Our goal is to not let that happen. Here's where there was a superintendent for five years there, 15 years there, and this gets into something I don't even want to go to. This is the first green that Gary and I started on 15 or 10 years ago. This was at a country club, and I really apologize for the quality of that picture. There's a stratified layer up in here. You, there's a stratified layer here. There's a stratified layer up here right at, at the turf surface. There's a big stratified layer here and one here. Stratified meaning a high organic content layer that holds a lot of water. Okay. I didn't date this and I just apologize again for the quality stuff. You, the layers aren't as prevalent a few years later. This is like three to four years later is all of using our program, which I'll lay out for you in a little bit. What we've been able to do here is to not lower the percent of organic matter, say it's two and a half percent. What we've done is change the consistency of it. So now instead of having the water move down to a level and go horizontal and get wet and move down again and so forth, we have free flowing water. We have free flowing water, we have free flowing air. The nutritional requirements are nothing. We are we're running roots deeper than we've ever run them before. And the nutrition uptake is, is tremendous, plus the mineralization that takes place. These are air holes. These are where we go into a golf green and, and put aerification holes in so that we can add new sand to that profile and dilute the organic matter and improve the playing conditions. You see how tight they are around that bottle cap. This is thatch. Everybody got thatch in their home on? Huh? You can tolerate that. How would you like to putt on it? This is, this is thatch that will accumulate. One of the ways they take care of it is to add more sand to it to dilute it. Okay. What we're doing and is going out and looking at what's some of the research that's been done. This is a 2008 article that talks about the use of compost teas to digest the organic matter that's in a golf course. Okay. Here's one of the products that came out on the market maybe seven or eight years ago. This product was put together. It cost our clients about $3,000 a year 
for three acres, three and a half acres of golf green with the purpose of digesting organic matter. It didn't work. Mm. Oh, it didn't work. We have one client who, who, who got into this and all they use is a CS44 on top of it and it worked like a charm to do that. Here's the newest product on the market. Worm power, you ever hear that? This is worm casting tea. $5,000 for under four acres of green per year. Guys aren't having any success with it. Here's a product called Thatcher Limerick. It's been around for years. Anybody ever hear that? I doubt it in your businesses. Okay. Microbial product. I'm sure Ariel could tell us more about what's in it. I can't. Here's a research article from, I think it was 2006, that said if you took molasses and you used it to digest organic matter, you got a certain amount of digestion. If you took that chex, that last product, and you used it, you got a certain amount of digestion. If you put the two together, it was expanded like crazy. And that's what this article showed. So again, this was 2006. So I came back to Gary and said, look, I want to reproduce this. This whole idea of this. And we had already been using biologicals for several years in greenhouses and nursery. I just hadn't applied it to my golf business yet. So this is our program. We come out in the spring of the year, and we use CS44 uh, uh, 1.25 gallons per acre. We put residues on it, and this is usually at that aerification time when those holes were in that grain. We use, uh, and I think these have changed, haven't they, the residues? That, that's still good. That's, that's still the right one. The WS is the culture. Gary changes it every year on me on the acronyms, and so I have to change it on my favorite work. I'm never sure it's quite right. Okay, so what we do is we put these down with, with spring and fall aerification in the cool seasons. Okay, and we wash them in. Every 30 days throughout the summer, we come in with CS44, SP1, biohumus, and kelp. Fall, we come back in with the fall. What are the results? We have guys on, go on this program on golf greens costs most of our clients about $1,200 a year. It is in Green Bay, Wisconsin, and uh, to say Springfield Champaign area, all the way through. We've got like, as Gary said, 45 or so yeah. golf courses on this program as we speak. We have guys who have cut their nitrogen use on golf courses to almost nothing. We have guys who are cutting so much grass now that we've reduced the CS44 to 50% use and, and maintained everything else. Those stratified layers you see where water and air have a problem moving throughout the golf grains, throughout the sand profiles and stuff, are disappearing completely. Now we're moving free water, free air, we're rooting deeper. So these guys are saving truckloads of money. I tell them, here's the Greens program. On their own, within a year or two, almost every golf course takes it to their tees. So now they're using it on Greens and tees. And we have four or five guys now who use this wall-to-wall -wall on 45 acres of bed grass. Fairways and all. We had a gentleman on it on a big grass fairway up on the north side of Chicago in cool season grass, who put out a tenth of a pound of urea per thousand square feet in a sprayer in June one time. He said, I don't know why I did. That's all he's done for a month, every month, to feed an entire fairway. No problem. Disease cycles are just about non-existent for most of our guys. Insect problems don't seem to be there at the same level. We have to use what's called wetting agents to get the sands to hold water and so they don't go hydrophobic for us. All the wetting agents, we use them at like 50% rate anymore because this does it on its own. Those guys are saving like $20,000 a year for this kind of money. Crazy, isn't it? Well, that's what we do with these products. I, I don't sell them, as, as I said before. I'm, I, I just totally 
I give him Gary's information. Well, if I would print the whole sheet, his name's at the bottom of it. I give him Gary's information. They call him order direct. I'm st strictly an information witness. Crazy? Yeah. Hmm? I'll answer questions if you got him, but I'm with that. That's just a new way of showing profitability. It is. Yeah. It's total profitability. And the guys love it because it's so simple for them. The vendors aren't sending me Christmas cards. <laughs> I'm not getting much of that anymore. <laughs> Say again, I'm sorry. Oh, we get to play. I, I, this caught fire in a way we never expected it to. Uh, anybody know? Well, we do all the most of the tournament work throughout the Midwest. We work for the USGA, the PGA, the LPGA, and most of the international work that comes in and out of the Midwest. And there's a tournament in Moline in the Quad Cities every year, John Deere Classic, right? Okay, so I've been on that golf course since 2003, a couple years after it got built. This past year, during the tournament, uh, all the agronomists get together back in the shop. And so they start at 2 in the morning, get the golf course ready, and then they go back in the shop and have breakfast. For the first two days of the tournament, Thursday and Friday, this program was the topic among the PGA Tour. This program is, should be by spring onto um, a golf course down in Arizona. Okay, and they're going to the PGA Tour once they start looking at it. That's, that's, how I, that's how it's catching fire. Well, that's another way to do it, right? <laughs> Thank you, guys. So we have volunteers to go. Yeah, you want to go play golf? <laughs> so if there's volunteers to go check out the course in Arizona yeah, next year. Not a problem. That's in winter? <laughs> Thanks, Dave. I need to slip out of here, too, so yep. I apologize. And everybody uh, has a sheet, I believe, with Dave's little program. And it has his, his contact info on it.